So here we go. DM2 just got green clearance on the weather for launch. Propellant load pole checked green, and the arm retraction should begin in about 25 seconds. This is the BOSA VOD of DM2's launch from Kennedy Space Center. Uh, welcome in. Everyone else has been hanging out here for several hours. Uh, thanks for watching the video and recording if you have been. But we're going to bring John Innsbrucker from SpaceX volume back up now that the recording is going. Enjoy, sit back. we got about 45 minutes until launch if you're going to watch this the whole way through. But here we go. No constraints on launch. 45 minutes and counting. Reminder on hold and launch escape protocol. For non-urgent no-go conditions, brief the CE or LD, and they will approve a boarding launch auto sequence and proceed to launch abort. And hi, Dad, says chat. As you can see, Arky in the chat off to the left-hand side of the monitor. What's going on in ComNet right now? There goes the arm. ComNet is instructing controllers that if they have an abort condition, they have a constraint out of green status to pull back to Flight Director. But that is basically Flight Director going, we are go for launch at T-44 minutes and 25 seconds. While the alarm is evaluated, in the event that personal safety is threatened, Evacuate the, to the south-facing emergency exit, which leads directly outside. At this time, weather is go for launch. You can see on the screen. Some claps in the background at that one. T minus 40, we're T minus 44 minutes, five seconds. The launch location is Kennedy Space Center for the first time in almost nine years, the Omega. An American rocket with an American crew from American soil. And we Regaining U.S. Uh, access direct to the International Space Station, minutes. and only the fifth time Falcon that there has been a new vehicle Dragons. for crewed launch from NASA. The arm is pulling away. The range is go for launch. They continue to monitor the air and the sea. It's only the, it's the first time since and John Young was the commander of the shuttle during its test flight that only two astronauts have been in a vehicle at launch from Kennedy. You're talking late 70s. And out in the Atlantic in the abort zones. Now earlier we saw many of you following the launch from the United States on our hotspot map. Now that we're I think an hour, we're seeing large numbers Doug Hurley and Bob Bacon might have just had it sink in that they might be going today. Like yeah, so for uh, for the kids watching, the space program has been in existence since the late 1950s. It was a program called Mercury, and that program led to Gemini and then the famous Apollo program, which put humankind on the moon. We've not been back to the moon since the early 1970s. We relied on a program called Space Shuttle, which was a big space plane to put things into orbit, including building the International Space Station. And that rocket you see right there is the United States replacement for the space shuttle to put crewed missions, astronauts, back into space from our country. It's a historic day. If you have questions and you're a kid, I know that some of the kids don't have access to keyboards if they're watching. Please ask your parents to ask the question. I'll be more than happy to give you an answer. But this right here is why math and science is important. The name of the capsule, says Doc, is Dragon. And this specific version or this type of it is called Crew Dragon because there are people in it. The rocket is called Falcon 9. The rocket has nine engines on it, hence Falcon 9. And what's really cool about this rocket is after they launch it and that bottom piece comes off, they call that separation, that bottom piece will land so on a ago, ship the in the ocean and they'll use it again. And obviously we just heard on the comms, uh, Bob and Doug, Getting ready to arm the launch and if we're lucky, so we're going to get to see on the screen today that rocket landing orbit. back so on when, that ship. When fueling starts at about T minus 35 yep. minutes, so just they do have some great names at SpaceX: they Falcon, Falcon Heavy, Dragon, Crew to Dragon. Abort, uh, to separate from Falcon 9, either on the pad or even after lift. We are at T minus 41 minutes. Crew access arm is already retracted. And we are going to go. The launch escape system is going to be armed. RP1 loading will begin at. RP1 is a fuel. It's the gas. One of the gases that and fuels the engine. Call out that they are arming the launch escape there we go. Launch escape system exciting. being armed. That is SpaceX about five minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, oh, three minutes ahead of schedule. I have no problem with the Roman Greek naming conventions. Uh, Myth has been used to name many, many things uh, so um, Nick Picone, out there Nick in the universe, but you can't use Myth forever. Artemis is a great name for the sister mission series to Apollo, though.
because she is Apollo's hey, sister. Happy to be here. Uh, still monitoring the launch. How here fast will the rocket be moving? You awesome. want to know the speed today of Falcon 9? I'll go get that from their uh, website. Earlier this year, and now works on the Starlink team. Um, Nick, on Wednesday you uh, talked about the launch escape system. Could you just give us a brief summary today for those that are joining today? Sure. So the launch escape system, again, is our, uh, our ultimate safety feature to keep Bob and Doug safe in the event of a, a major Falcon anomaly on the pad. The system is designed to automatically fire if either vehicle detects a dangerous condition developing. And if that happens, Dragon will use its eight Super Draco engines to push the capsule okay, off Okay, at sea level. I'll give it to you miles per hour in just a Falcon. second, Goose. Um, this, this capability is absolutely critical. Um, it's what keeps the crew safe. Uh, and we're now active and armed on the pad uh, with it protecting the crew. And as you mentioned, the launch escape system allows the... 1.72 miles per second. Um, I believe it goes into the ocean. What, what happens after it lands safely in the ocean? Correct. So for most of our failure modes, the successful end state is Dragon deploying parachutes, splashing down safely in the ocean. But since a launch I hope so too. The the recovery ship is a drone orbit. ship, really, really, really uh, fast indeed. Down right off the coast of your the car that your dad the drives around in generally can go safely around 60 miles per hour. So if we change uh, that 1.72 miles per hour into miles or miles per second into miles per hour. Bob and Doug as soon as possible. And you mentioned that the launch escape system will Do keep the them safe all the way up quick. to orbit. Uh, what what other options are there after Dragon is in orbit? Yep, six kilometers. Sure. There you so go. Diablo's got reason, it. reason, we're unable to dock to the International Space Station. Uh, we have several pre-planned return trajectories, which will bring the so Let's go back and double check. I'm checking back for polling real quick. Close to shore. Uh, where NASA and SpaceX Spacesuit visors are closed. Arming of uh, launch like escape system complete. Normal, um, recovery operation except for the early end of mission. Um, Next major this, uh, milestone is RP-1, which is one of the fuels. Liquid oxygen loading into stage one. Because, uh, the landing site we look are looking good. Flexibility as possible. There could be changing weather conditions that bring down one site and leave the other one up. Uh, so we have those two identical. <laughs> it's a great three tweet, Mads. One in the Gulf of Weather Mexico. green for launch. In our space operations, technology green to go to for launch site uh, is the safest option for the crew at that time. And with the vehicle, there's going to be a, a portion that they talk like about the max Q during launch. And those of you who have not watched a, a mission with us like before or not, ocean, not dug into what things are, max Q is um, maximum dynamic pressure or and, um, the maximum the physical the impact the on the space vehicle that happens during its flight. Like up. So you will start to see contrails sure, so start to form to around the rocket as it gets ready to break Mach 1. That's really uh, close to Max Q. You'll, when you see that, you know that uh, the, the vehicle is going under as much stress as it's going to experience ever during the flight. A lot of offshore experience with our spacecraft. Uh, uh, DB lives at Fort Myer. He lives on the other side of the peninsula, but he's close. Recovery ship, uh, two identical he mentioned that this morning in Dustin's stream. Which had one of those lessons learned baked into the design of that ship and the operations. These new ships have complete medical facilities, an operational helipad, and redundant communication. T minus 36 power, minutes. To make sure they're robust getting ready for anything we to load We've also propellant. Gilly lives close enough, he should be able to see it as well. SpaceX team he's in our, um, I believe he's close to Orlando, earlier, right? Practicing capsule recovery, emergency I want to give away the specific area he lives in. Capsule while they're still in the water. Um, as well as those helicopter evacuations taking off and landing from the pad. So we're talking um, about Max-Q. So that, sure that should happen 58 seconds that. after uh, launch. They're all staged and ready. Permanoob! Um, Permanoob, we are green we're on the weather, to green to on technical constraints, and 100% go for launch with T-minus like 36 minutes and 20 really seconds and on the clock. We are good red. right um, now. Uh, we cleared the fill mill field mill sensors at about T minus fifty five and they gave us a green on cumulus cloud rule at about T minus fifty somewhere in there. We are green on excitement, my friend. It is go for launch across the board right now. Uh, go for it. So we're gonna go full screen at about T minus ten minutes right now. We're just watching the Falcon nine presentation from NASA TV and doing commentary. Chats on the screen. Hi Perm family, welcome in. You're watching with the family called the Big Top Outlaws. This is our space administration and where we watch 
rocket launches from. Um, We've got kids so from some of our, our uh, community members watching along with us, doing some explanations on spaceflight, how it works. But welcome in. Happy to have you. This is an exciting day in American history. Which, as you know, happens before fueling. And dragon propellant load. That's the always makes me a little self-conscious. You're on a 51-inch TV on my, my living room. Really? <laughs> Prop load for Dragon took place weeks ago and just a, a few miles down the road in what we call Dragon. But for those of you coming in, and, and I do see some people joining in, and for those of you that have been here, this is a rehash, but this is this is a historic is, uh, day. This is the fuel. first time in nine years, nitrogen, nitrogen years that American astronauts will launch from American together. soil. It will be on an American-made rocket, and it is only the fifth time that, uh, that Americans will fly for the first time ignite. on a new space the, vehicle. Um, it is the first time since the initial shuttle test that only two astronauts will be on board a crewed spacecraft. The DM-2 mission will demonstrate and certify this craft for NASA to use to send astronauts to the International Space Station. This mission is also going to the International Space Station. It will be there tomorrow, 19 hours after liftoff, which is at 3.22.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. In T minus 34 minutes and 34 seconds. Additional Dracos that are underneath the nose cone for large delta Sweet. E maneuvers. So we do encourage perform. on the, the BOSA that streams that out, kids that be brought in because spaceflight is amazing. Physics and math are amazing. And this is going to be really cool to watch. So we are green for launch. Weather has been a concern, but we are clear on all weather sensors right now. Welcome in, Jamish. Thank you for the host. We are green on all technical indicators on the space system the launch system is good the escape system has been armed the arm for the crew loading has been retracted the pad crew is off the pad on top of the spaceship that lifts the vehicle off um, in the case of dragon our escape system is integrated into the vehicle completely and so that's one just better from a yep rolls the AV card in the classroom absolutely flight ton of people um, here. Thanks for showing up today, everybody. Capability from the pad. If you know anybody that has ever likes rocket launch and space flight, today is a very so distinctly very historic minute, day in American space flight. Of stage two, while we're in space, this is not just an everyday rocket launch. Mm -hmm. um, so Those yeah, are not a thing, but system for this is a little bit more special. Little, little baby dragon here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lauren, and, and thanks for, for walking us through that because I think it's really important that people understand T minus 33 minutes. Um, that critical safety capability, and that's that's RP-1 and locks liquid oxygen should be loading on. into the first what stage at this time. What that means is that in an instant, they can separate from Falcon 9, shoot up into the air, and they can splash down safely in the Atlantic oh. Ocean under Dragon's parachute. Confirmation, T-35 seconds, propellant so, load has started. Um, RP-1 kerosene fuel is now flowing into both stages of Falcon 9, liquid oxygen being now, loaded so into first stage. That, safe, that safety capability uh, ready to go on standby in an instant if they need it. And so we want to go over to Hawthorne now for an operation. Hawthorne, California is the headquarters of John. SpaceX, who has made the Falcon 9 rocket. Two fuel, all flow rates tracking nominally. And the Dragon capsule. And here's some noise out my window. I apologize. The windows are open. It's a cooler day here. That's just part of doing my stream for my apartment. Well, welcome in, everybody. I think it, it I think we're going to go much more optimistic than Wednesday. We're still fighting weather constraints down at T minus 17 which caused the scrub. 32 minutes counting down these final minutes everything's still looking good for Falcon 9. Look at that cloud off the coast that, that, that has cleared up significantly. Let's have one more look at the weather coverage now that we've gone about 30 minutes. Now on the Falcon 9, we use a fuel and oxidizers, the propellants that power. And that cloud bank has moved off. There's a little bit of clouds out there, but we got 30 minutes to go. I think we're good on the clouds. Densified liquid oxygen, also called LOX. Densified means it is kept much colder than typical for launch vehicles. This allows for more oxidizer to be loaded into the first and second stages. Now with the fuel and oxidizer on hand, we need an ignition source to complete that fire triangle, as we call it. For this, Falcon 9 uses a fluid called T-TEB. It ignites in the presence of oxygen and gives off a green colored flame. Now it's hard to see on the first stage ignition due to the water that will be spraying on the pad, but you might just see the green flare as the second stage engine ignites following stage separation over two and a half minutes into flight. Now currently first stage fuel tank is about 10% full. 
The first stage, as a reminder, as you look on the left side of your screens, the first stage is the long white cylinder at the bottom, topped off by the black cylinder. So over two thirds of the rocket is that first stage. So the fuel tank is getting loaded. We're also loading Trying the liquid to get my oxygen dad to the TV into the first least. stage also. The second stage, which is the top one third between the Dragon and the uh, Black T minus cylinder, 30 minutes, uh, 25 the seconds. Second stage, that is being Mark. loaded with fuel right now. That's about 8% loaded at this moment. Liquid oxygen loading is going to begin on second stage at T minus 16 minutes, 30 seconds. Liquid oxygen loading. Starting to get the chills down my spine. Can he access YouTube on his phone? I think so. Uh, that's not a bad call. My mom can. Vessels on the stages. That's used to pressurize tanks in for yeah. the propellant is pulled. The sky out the started to clear up, man. Pumps. On board the Dragon You can see the sun trail. breaking through it. Monitoring systems while the propellant is loaded into Falcon 9. While we did, we mentioned we had trained them with sounds that we had recorded on board. They've been through most of a propellant load, and they are now experiencing those. So, as I said Wednesday, vibrations. you will likely hear a tower clear Stage call. Helium load started. Helium load started Stage launch. one. Weather, the you might, you may likely hear a tower clear call. That is, ago, everything simplify, is aim high, because the astronauts on board are one Marine and we'll one Air Force Colonel. All the way through the countdown. Now, as a reminder, today we are now into an instantaneous launch window. Now that we've begun yep. propellant loading. So at this point, if we hear a hold for any reason, we'll have to stand down and target our backup launch opportunity tomorrow, May 31st. Thanks, John. For demo two, Bob and Doug's flight to station will take about 19 hours, and their journey is fairly similar to the trip our cargo dragon makes back and forth to the International Space Station, but with two noticeable differences, and that's docking and splashdown. And as we await T minus zero in just under 29 minutes from now, the ground operations teams are doing a series of system checks to make sure Dragon and Falcon 9 are both ready for liftoff. And we're continuing to get live views inside the capsule with Bob and Doug. And you're now also SpaceX reports all nominal flow rates for RP1 and liquid oxygen. Once we hit Super cold helium is loaded into rocket occurs, pressurization systems at this time. We will watch Falcon 9 and Dragon make their ascent until the Falcon 9 first and second That's stage your oxidizer. separates and sends Dragon on its way to the space station. And at this point, mission operators will prepare Dragon for on-orbit operations, where the vehicle will execute a series of burns that gradually raise its orbit to align more closely with the space station, as you can see in this animation. And just after putting Dragon into the same orbital plane as the station, the teams will get ready for Dragon's approach and docking maneuvers. That'll be tomorrow Dragon morning, which we will show on NASA TV in this, this stream. For those that want to see docking, I will present Dragon it. We've been bad about that in the past. past we will do that a tomorrow. Called birthing. Birthing requires a spacecraft to approach the station. Um, I think it's far more than two orbits. And maneuver the station's robotic arm to capture the spacecraft. Docking Considering that the space station can, can be done uh, does 29 no orbits a day. It's typically a faster process. Somewhere between 29 and 32 and orbits a day. But it does still require pinpoint accuracy to approach safely. Once captured, a spacecraft then gets attached to a common berthing mechanism, the same type of port. Yeah, that there's only two ports on the ISS the that have the common berthing mechanism. We talked about that last year. That, that is a limitation for commercial crew. Ports, which yes, it was very much a simplification really on their end. Cargo items. Dragon will spend up to 120 days docked SpaceX before SpaceX commentator to John Innsbrucker on the comm net reports weather conditions are Dragon's marginal but acceptable for liftoff of Falcon 9 and crew. We kind of already knew that. Close the cabin, perform final People are watching on the distinct the SpaceX feed that has just Once Innsbrucker on comm. That's why I just keep looking Dragon over here and pull up information. Burns using its T minus 26 minutes, 30 five seconds on the trip, until the liftoff entry all indicators are still green down, which is going to cover all the operations following that final departure maneuver that's going to include events like the trunk separation closing of the nose cone a deorbit burn and then eventually as they get into the atmosphere the deployment of the drogue and the main parachutes and all of that ends with splashdown right off the florida coast at that point teams from spacex will move in with their recovery ship grab the capsule out of the water and work to get Bob and Doug out of Dragon after a successful mission in space. So we are 26 minutes away from launch. Fueling of Falcon 9 is continuing. Let's check in one more time. Down with the team at Kennedy. Murray. Have a look at this real quick. 
All right, thanks, Dan. We are so pumped right now because things have cleared up and it looks like we might. And we'll go full screen today. here. If you're just joining us, we are now 25 minutes, 46 seconds, and counting. What we're looking at is from launch to ascent to the International Space Station. Flip maneuver, dragon separation, and proceed to ISS. There will this be will a separation of stage of one right in here, more people will be able to fly and then that stage one will conduct before. an entry burn, and we want to some aerodynamic guidance, and a vertical landing earlier. back on the drone ship called, of course, moon, I Still Love You. That's not where the astronauts are going today. They're going to the space station. But if you there is your the full moon, screen look at Kennedy Space Center, Pad 39, no as we get ready to launch DM2. And it was a pretty even split. We had... 46% of you say you would go to the moon's south pole and 54% of course I still love you is a great name for a drone ship I, I agree landing site. I kind of side with the Apollo 11 landing site because I'm a history buff and I want to see where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot it's Aldrin so not I, Aldrin I so if you're a history buff learn to pronounce his name I, correct I'm with you on that one and I would love to go see that flag there and those footsteps those footprints there his name is Buzz Steve Aldrin right? he you was the second individual to <laughs> walk on the moon <laughs> ever <laughs> after Neil Armstrong on a mission called Apollo like, 11 you know, the meatball you know which took classic. off yeah. going to the got to the moon and, and they walked on the moon July 20th 1969 that's all that inspiration came even though I was an antenna engineer not seeing it but <laughs> T minus that, 24 that, minutes history. 25 okay. seconds uh, maybe it wouldn't have to be one or next the major other. event on the checklist <laughs> exactly. welcome yeah. home Dracodai yeah. you did make it home on time we have 24 minutes to go to recap for Dracodai we are green on the weather green on all technical constraints and we are 100% go for launch as of this moment welcome in Dracodai next major milestone is T minus 16 when stage and two liquid oxygen on. propellant begins loading. Here is Tahira, who likes to talk with her hands a lot. She's going to do that again here as a motorcycle drives past my window. She has to. I don't get it. I don't get it. As you can see, photos are still coming in of just everyone around the country. You're welcome, Pixel. Showing their excitement for this launch. And it's really been a touching thing. Like, it's like she's got something on her hands that she's trying to shake off. Wednesday's first attempt. So we For those of you who think I'm making fun of her, it's actually in professional speaking that you keep your hands out of and view. So you don't speak with I your hands unless you're pointing to something to make for emphasis. She's she's nervously speaking with her hands. You want to put your hands down from the and keep them out of frame. It's just going to be a super emotional moment. You don't want your that, hands to do the talking because you break the line of eye contact with you and the person you're speaking to. All right, thanks to Hira and. Leland, we got I do talk with my hands as well to show passion, to but this is for them, Bob professional, feeling right now. and I she think, you know, has never stopped, like they need to bind to hear his hands, pilots, but because she thinks she talks with her hands the whole time, it's like if a malfunction or and she's bouncing, like, so the like normal video. stuff is all kind of automated, but if something happens where they have to intervene with those touch screens, T-minus 23 minutes, mm -hmm. and we are, down. we're just inside 23 minutes launch. now, so on Wednesday we were five minutes further in the countdown when we heard that call to scrub and we uh, the weather was still very touch and go at this right. point on wednesday but today it, it f at least for right now i don't want to jinx it i'm afraid <laughs> to even say it out loud but it looks, it looks better much better today it looks yeah, better there's it, no it, doubt it, about it that feels it looks like, much better whew, I, i'm feeling it a lot it more right. than i yeah. did it on wednesday right. And, you know, speaking of Bob and Doug and them being really calm and, and cool and collected, um, I had the opportunity to I would bet tomorrow they mentioned to it, Doc. Train. I'll, if uh, I can I dig it out to tonight, say, I will. And, and, and to all of my friends who work with them every but single day. But I'm not going to dig on it with 22 minutes to go because I'll miss something. They are. Right. Mm -hmm. And just how not just bright and sharp they are, but just good people. I think you mean and the number of orbits the, between the office, launch and dock, right? Because there's an indeterminate dads, amount of time the dads, in the entire mission. The they don't know they, when they're, they're going to bring it back dads. yet. They are yeah. dads, yeah. and we've met their T minus 2154. When you, when, you, when you see people on that very personal level, it starts We've to been watching so a countdown of this a mission of since team. 11 o'clock you know, this they're morning they're Eastern time in some form or fashion. That was five hours ago. We are 21 minutes and 40 seconds from liftoff of DM2 from Kennedy Space Center, pad 39A, the same pad that launched Columbia right, we for the first time, the same uh, pad that launched Martin Apollo 8 Houston, and Apollo Gary. 11. That is why they call it historic. Hey Marie, the uh, space station team here is focused. All eyes are on the system checks that are happening across the board, and we're listening in. That's flight operations on the wall there. That's the patch I want added to this flight good. suit. Chris which Cassidy my mom said she would do because she's a nice International lady. Space Station, right now flying over the Pacific Ocean. It's heading it to will be sitting in a place you can't see it, though. It'll be down here. Lift this up a little bit. You can see the uh, shuttle patches over here. 
We'll have the it will be on, on this side. screen up front, and everyone's excited to see our two crew members on their way to the. For those who've never seen the space flight suit before, over on this side before is the Orion it, patch. That is the the new capsule that NASA's building, and then above it is the Ares program patch, which never got off the ground really at NASA, but it's one of those moments in history that was part of my lifetime. So it's patched onto my suit. Members Bob and Doug in low Earth orbit and heading to second the stage RP1 station. kerosene fuel That's tank fully loaded for launch. In Mission Control Houston. I'll send it back over to the team in Hawthorne for the latest happening there. John. T minus. And the, those of you that never seen this patch before, it actually has fixer on it. And these are Air Force astronaut wings because I was in the Air Force. That's why, I, that's why this suit is the way it is. Stage right two on RP1 the right mode side, is complete. There it is, stage two RP1 load complete. The strong back. That is normal. As we get ready to load the second stage with liquid oxygen, we Barry have Butter, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. T minus 20 minutes and to so go. That that you see bleeding off of stage one is the liquid oxygen. The it has to be so cooled. That, that right there is what I was talking schedule. about much earlier in the broadcast, where you do not want ignition sources near this. But welcome in, Barry Butter. We are watching NASA and SpaceX get ready to make some American history and some space flight history today. Green on the weather, green on all technical constraints, and we are counting it down. of the way full, so things are looking good. Second stage is getting ready to begin the liquid oxygen loading. After they finish chilling in the lines that you see on the monitor, I have some goosebumps too. I'm getting, I'm getting some constant chills right now. The range right now is go, ready to support. Weather continues to be go. Weather so continues to be go. As we our way closer, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, we're waiting to uh, hear if anybody calls out an issue. But for the moment, as you can see on the screen, it looks How'd good. you like to be that guy? Now, on the Dragon Tide, the Dragon Mission Director and the team there are reporting no issues. They've done their communications checkouts. The crew access arm, as you can see, is retracted away from the spacecraft. The crew is strapped in and they are ready to go. Now, final instructions will be going to the crew at T minus 10 minutes. The crew displays will be configured for launch. And that setup will give astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley insight into how the launch is proceeding and provides constant updates on vehicle health. We've already heard the crew give their go, close their visors and get ready for launch. The smoke that's coming off the bottom stage is the condensation of liquid oxygen that is being super chilled so that they can load much more than would be normally possible at sea level and this temperature. So that excess is the condensation of that pressurized liquid oxygen load going into the first stage. One of the two reactant propellants that formed the propulsion of the first stage. Things are great from about 15 feet away from you, John I, and honestly, things are looking pretty great down at the pad there. We're seeing a lot more blue in the sky. Green is the color we want when we're talking about weather, and that's where we're sitting. T minus right 17 now. minutes, 50 seconds. So we're continuing to count Next major down. milestone, T minus 16 minutes when the upper stage or above that black off. separator, um, they will start to put the liquid oxygen into that uh, portion 12, of the rocket, and you will start to see the same sort of bleeding condensation coast, effect coming off that rocket to a lesser degree because there's simply not as much. Just a reminder, it's going to but be that smoke about a nine minute is actually gaseous vapor, and it's very normal. And Bob and Doug on board Dragon. It'll be a two stage flight. So we'll see the first stage fly until we hear Miko or main engine cut off about two and a half minutes into flight. After that, the second stage will take over and continue to power them the rest of the way. Second engine cutoff comes in just under nine minutes at about eight minutes and 44 seconds. Following that second stage completing Those of you that its come job, in. It'll continue to As we've counted down, thank you for being here today. The support here is pretty amazing for what is us watching a rocket launch sure together, like watching history together. And I really appreciate you all taking the time to be here today. I appreciate your interest in this. T minus 16, 43 and, and counting, rolling up free. on first stage it's or upper, st sorry, second stage or upper stage liquid oxygen propellant load. Weather continues to be green. They'll have a number of burns or those firings of those Draco thrusters that they'll do over Stage two, several. lock load started. They are 26 seconds so ahead of schedule. Liquid oxygen, liquid oxygen load, load has started for stage two. two, as I just said the same thing they do in the Again, broadcast. They're going to be set. doing a series of burns on the way uphill towards the International Space Station. Five spread out over. We the, are now the past the point we were at so Wednesday. They did not load locks on stage two Wednesday. And it's time uh, for that approach and docking. 
and we are expecting that. So some milestones we'll as we get ready today. for launch. Uh, uh, the next major milestone for the liftoff will be at T minus five minutes when it goes to internal power. At T minus or T plus right. fifty eight seconds, max Q, max dynamic pressure, max physical forces on the vehicle. At T plus two minutes thirty seconds, you will have main engine cutoff of stage one. At four seconds beyond that, T plus two thirty four, the first and second stages separate. And then at seven twelve, T plus seven twelve, that first stage reentry burn starts. You'll start to see the camera start to go to the first stage landing at about T plus Plus nine and a half minutes. Actually, T plus nine minutes. It's they have it listed nine oh nine this time. Uh, so T plus eight thirty is when we're going to be looking for that landing of the first stage booster. And of course, I still love you. At the staging location. Of course. But we will clear that hurdle at uh, T minus seven minutes. Awesome. Great. Very exciting. Um, now I'm going to throw it back to 2012 because you were on console for Dragon when it was. You are live at the Perma Ranch. Welcome stage. in for those of you watching at the Perma Ranch. To this today. is the Big Top Outlaw Space so, Administration uh, at T minus 1450, counting down to DM2 mission launch <laughs> from Cape nervous. Canaveral, Florida. So is the first Good time job. in nine years a crewed no, mission fantastic. will take off. From American Fantastic soil, day. this will be really on an American-built rocket with American together. astronauts like on board. Operation. SpaceX when is the provider, team, the way, NASA is the customer, and, NASA, and it is the first it's, time uh, since the shuttle testing took off and have done an, a, that a crewed mission job. with American astronauts so has had a crew of two or smaller. And we know that it is history-making. It is only the fifth time a new crewed vehicle will lift off from Kennedy. Well, I want to thank NASA, of course, uh, for their uh, their generosity. That lady right there is the C the chief operating officer of SpaceX. She is largely responsible for many, many, together, many things that uh, you are seeing moment, today. Uh, in her last name is Shotwell, and, uh, and I cannot remember her first I name for the life of me right now. Elon for hiring me. <laughs> T minus 1355. Next major milestone, the countdown is T Thank minus so much for seven we'll minutes when the Falcon 9 control. engines begin their chill, um, and, and then T minus five minutes Thanks, when internal power transfer happens. <laughs> well, we are so excited. Gwen, that's it. Gwen shot well. From countdown. So we are going to turn it over to Dan and John for the mi final minutes in terms of count. Uh, take it away, John. T minus 13 minutes. We'll bring seconds. the volume down. of the main presentation from NASA up as we approach liftoff. Fuel onto the first stage. That should finish up. So in, if you have uh, questions, now is the time. Minutes. We've had some great Fuel questions. What's the speed it's going to be traveling? What's that white That's smoke, which is actually vapor condensation coming off of the rocket? On both the first Ask your questions. We will answer them. It's a the great opportunity to learn some stuff about space travel. Stage, uh, just, uh, I am super bright against that background. Let's take some light off me. also loading cryogenic helium into the storage vessels on the first and second stage, getting in the last little bits of helium when we keep it uh, cryogenic, cold and liquefied, that gets us, uh, just like we do with liquid oxygen, the maximum amount into the storage volume. So, so from a physics perspective, when you make something colder, you can compress the amount right of matter now, contained in, in the same volume, which makes it denser. And that's what they're doing. To put the they're they're in creating the first and more stages. space for more fuel by making Next it colder. Significant issue, call outs that we're going to hear. Kirk, what's up? Inside and see you sneak in here. 10 minutes when uh, they talk to the crew. We'll listen for that. Welcome in. Moment, everything T minus 12 minutes, 20 good. seconds, Mark, as we count down to... The liftoff of DM2. We are green on the weather. We are green on all technical Getting indicators. Close now, John. It's yeah, I don't like calling out lurkers unless they, you know, I really, away. really know they don't Just care. Just a reminder for everybody, it's about a nine-minute ride uphill. We'll have some dueling boxes going on as that first stage is going to be coming home while the second stage is carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So obviously, we'll be keeping an eye on our astronauts the whole way uphill. Some of the calls that you'll be hearing as there will be what we call performance calls over the dragon to ground the entire way up. They do launches at higher altitude. Hear, uh, you mean with respect to sea level or not sea level? Uh, trajectories and booster. Um, most launches uh, from American soil are at sea level. I know that's um, one of the primary two launch sites from American too. soil are Kennedy Space Center and Vandenberg Air Force Base, and they choose those launch sites for different reasons. The French Guiana launch site for the Ariane Space Group is also, I think it's 32 feet above sea level. Level. And There's then uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome out at what is called Star City near Moscow is also relatively close to sea level. Cape, 
all the way up to um, about there's not a lot of North upper Carolina, elevation because it really we'll messes with the the ability to pressurize the gas if you know sea level is an atmospheric pressure consistent or constant then your mathematics does not have to change very much so as you evaluate Atlantic, rocket building for different launch sites as long as they are near to sea level to that's why they don't do that and so you should hear the call out be something similar to forward it would change the way or how much they could pressurize the liquid oxygen or the hydrogen or the helium that they're putting in there right now Matt, thank you for the host as we get ready to hit cross over the 10 minute mark t minus 10 35 and counting down to engine chill calls. at Hopefully T minus seven. Hurt thing the host as well. Ten and a half minutes. Things are pretty quiet. As no John I said, it'll pick up at right at about ten minutes. We'll wait for the crew. So this is my this last is chance to step up. I'm gonna get up real quick. I'll be right back. The crew is already strapped in and reported that they are go for launch, and we'll continue to watch the fuel gauges tick up on the Falcon 9 vehicle until fueling cuts off at just about two minutes prior to launch. Dragon and SpaceX confirmed displays are configured for launch. SpaceX Dragon displays are configured for launch. Copy. Bob, Doug, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, it's been a huge honor to help you get ready for today's historic mission. Know that we're with you, have an amazing flight, and enjoy those views of our beautiful planet. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it is absolutely our honor to be part of this uh, huge effort to get uh, the United States back in the launch business. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you for more, but thank you. Copy all. Thanks for those words. The SpaceX core. So again, that voice that's going to be talking to Bob and Doug throughout their mission from right here in Hawthorne. Just offering a few quick words the crew did confirm their crew displays Jack, are configured those. for launch we are coming up on hi perms family or county. tim's family we've gotten through t minus 10 minute with the crew discussion. hi goose hi fish's kiddo nine. exciting uh, stuff eight minutes 53 seconds left minutes. until lift off of dm2 pre-valves will open that's awesome those currently separate propellants uh, on the first stage from they just thank the crew the for their service says doc that's, we'll that's awesome there's a marine veteran and an air force veteran on board the flow to the top of the pumps and more importantly when we open uh, the valves that allow us to begin chilling the nine like fidgety excited turbo pumps on the first stage engine it'll take a few minutes to get them cold enough to where they would then be ready to pass the large amounts of liquid oxygen through the pumps and into the main thrust chambers when we get to engine ignition at T minus two seconds. Nearly We've time indeed, seven, eight run. minutes, 10 uh, seconds, mark left. Alti, thank you for the auto host, uh, appreciate it. You would flash that into gas and running gas Sorry, through a high speed pump breath. is not a good thing. So right now we are waiting for T minus seven minutes. That'll start the engine chill. Shortly after that, we will also get the fuel shut down. You'll shut down and then internal power transfer at T minus five. Listening to the SpaceX launch director in the background there. As I mentioned, at T minus seven minutes, as we start the chill, we will also get into the uh, final topping off of stage one fuel, and then the fuel load will complete. T minus seven approaches to start Falcon 9 engine chill. You will have a camera feed from inside Crew Dragon. So I think of the host. You don't often get that one. But there will be that right camera feed that will be active during launch. Obviously, there are going to be some times where it doesn't work because it's going to be shaking in there. But Stage 1 and Stage 2 engine chill has started. We've heard the call out. Stage one engine chill has started. That's gone up to the crew so that they've got situational awareness. As I mentioned, the pre-valves are open. And now we are topping off for stage fuel, getting ready to finish. Fuel, fuel should be load. done momentarily. Liquid oxygen load on first and second engine stage will continue until the last three to two minutes of the countdown. All right, so we're moving up to we should hear that five minutes. T minus five minutes is the transition to internal to power. RP. One you will be at T minus one minute, and this is where they definitely will be done fueling when propellant tank pressurization to flight pressure begins. 
as well as the Command Flight Computer begins their final pre-launch checks. And then T-45, this is the big one, the yeah, Flight Director will verify go for launch. The, that, the command for the engine at that point is handed off to the engine controller, right and the engine controller will actually initiate their engine startup at three seconds, T-3 seconds. Uh, is complete. Draining back the lines now, so first that's uh, that's good because I am curious about the complete. actual flight yoke. But thank you for letting me know because I definitely missed that. Stages. Doc you referring to the, the, the flight monitor, controls the not being in front of the crew, and my curiosity about where exactly the flight yoke is. is the tank How long will it take them to get to their destination? About 19 hours and change, seven. The uh, they will arrive at ISS at station tomorrow morning. We will broadcast the NASA feed of that on this channel on Looks Mixer. Like this moment, so if you are interested in seeing the docking procedures of Crew Oxidizer Dragon, the uh, tune in tomorrow morning prior to 10 a.m. Eastern. We'll be counting down all the way till about two or three T minutes. T minus five, five minutes, set, about to hand internal power to control right, to Dragon. And then we will be go for launch. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Vehicle tanks pressing for strong back retract. Strong back is the arm holding up the rocket right now. You can see it on the far side of it. We're pressurizing the Falcon 9 tanks. We're going to open the clamp arm around the second stage and begin to retract the strong back. You, you do see now the upper we'll stage as well has the liquid oxygen inside that is venting under chill and pressurization, just like the first stage was. Strong back retract started. started. Strong back retract started. Stage 2, RP-1 bleed. Launch director called out the strong back retract has started on the left. You'll see it go back just a couple of degrees. It'll go like one, this. It's not very far, just enough to get clear of the rocket. T minus four minutes, five seconds for DM2 liftoff. NASA and SpaceX history on the pad right now. First time only two astronauts in an American made rocket on <laughs> since the shuttle. Again, at this moment, Bob and Doug yeah. are really just laser focused. I can't um, imagine what it could be like to sit on something as big as Starship later on. This is pretty awesome. Three minutes, 40, two seconds nine, left until liftoff. Fuel loading is at. Next major milestone at T minus one minute. Down with the count. AFTS final setup started. Three and a half minutes from launch. And the strong back is now reclining away from the Falcon 9. You hear the uh, the venting, the pressurization venting from the valves. And back igniter purges. There's a strong back pushback started. That cable will stay attached to that I'll until the rocket pulls it. T minus two minutes fifty seconds to launch. On internal power. Stage one locks load close out. Stage one locks or liquid oxygen okay, fuel closeout. Minus two minutes, forty-two seconds. Stage on internal one, power is closed out. Stage two will continue to load for about another half a minute or so. Still go for launch. No indicators stage reported negative. Gr we weather's still green. The line, so you'll see another large white cloud coming off of the strong back. That'll be normal. That'll happen Vehicle around transitioning to T minus power. one minute and forty seconds. We're going on internal power now. Just a few seconds away from the stage two locks load being complete. T minus two minutes, 10 it's seconds. Almost nine years since we've been in this position. A lot of work done by thousands of people to get to this point. Rocket destruct system is All armed. That is to destroy the now. bottom section if there is a problem during launch and abort needs to be triggered. You can see the water being pumped out now. That is the uh, the sound dampening system. We talked about it about T minus 45. Propellant fills are complete. T minus one minute, 45 seconds. Dragon is an auto idle. Everything on track. Falcon 9 confirmed on internal power. All fuel. All, all indicators on track on for liftoff. Nine. One minute, 34 seconds to go till launch. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Goosebumps on my arms are real right now. You really want to watch the nose cone open? That'll actually happen relatively shortly after they're in orbit, Max. That won't be tomorrow. That'll be today.
We'll stick with it. We'll see if they show it. I doubt that there's going to be a camera that can show the angle, though. You will be able to see the nose cone open at, uh, nose cone open from the ISS tomorrow, though. T minus one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. Command flight yeah, computer begins pre-launch checks. Propellant tank pressurization to flight pressure has started. Under a minute now, the FTS, the flight termination. Waiting for T minus 45 for go from flight director. Welcome back, Nadeko. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. There's your flight director, go for launch. T minus 40. SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, Go, baby. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. Here we go. Fly, baby. Go, NASA. Go, SpaceX. Godspeed. Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises Copy. a new era of American space flight. And with Boston it, the nominal. ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. There she goes. T plus 29 climbing. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Speed, Falcon 600, 700 kilometers per hour, altitude, 4 kilometers. M1D, throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Max Q at 58 seconds, T+. Plus. We're in the throttle bucket. They're throttling it down to re relieve as much pressure as they can. Reports say all systems are Max good. Q. 230, T plus 230, main engine cutoff. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. Rocket supersonic. 1,200 kilometers per hour. Altitude 2.5 kilometers. We're throttling back up to full power as we're through one max Q. Copy one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until. Look the at them just chilling in there. Job and they switch over to the second. Max Q, point, maximum dynamic Robin pressure on the vehicle. The most physical D, stress the vehicle will the experience gravity, during its flight to orbit. Over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next 3,400 kilometers per hour and altitude of 37 kilometers. We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first Main engine engines, cutoff in stage 25 seconds mark. And then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. Main engine cutoff at 230T plus, 234T plus, the separation of first and second stage. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. Getting ready for main engine cutoff on stage one and set. And we have Miko. Miko. Two alpha. Falcon stage There goes stage one from stage two, falling away. You have about five minutes until they start to fire for their reentry burn from stage one. There is the vacuum Merlin firing on stage two. We have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and 67, Doug into orbit. 6,800 so kilometers above the, the Earth at an altitude of 100, phenomenal. sorry, 6,850 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 122. At Way past the Carmen line and in space. Into today's flight. So a little over sorry for the background noise. Still, That's just the nature of living near a road. Second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from That's the That's K-A-R-M-A-N line. It is a line that defines the definition between Earth atmosphere and space good, vacuum. Though, what is outer Nominal space is generally accepted to be, be between 90 kilometers stage. and 100 kilometers Nominal from the surface of the Earth. Definition of, did I go into space? 
Dragon SpaceX, normal Two plus trajectory. Four minutes approaching. Next major milestone is signal, the 712 Think first stage reentry burn. Trajectory. You're welcome, Herc. Happy to have the questions. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. It's very interesting. This is the first time this the other ground group has watched using to get telemetry and data back. A, this from capsule with people right. in it. We did watch Ripley, Ripley, the Android robot, go up in it last year. We have watched some Roscosmos launches with with uh, cosmonauts and astronauts on it, but this is special. That is a great video feed coming from the inside of that capsule. Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin in space on their way to the International Space Station, launched from. Kennedy Space Center today. A little over four minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. You are about Bob five minutes away from first stage landing, and of course I still love you. Nominal trajectory. About Already eight minutes away from second stage, set from Kennedy our Crew Space Dragon Center. separation Nominal from the second stage. Continuing. There are your glide fins on the first stage on the right-hand side. They are maneuvering the rocket for capture on Of Course I Still Love You. The left side is the internal, obviously, picture of Crew Dragon. Right, again, first stage of Falcon 9, heading back down to the ocean to be captured. And while they continue uphill, it takes like uh, the view of the first very, stage very as well. focused communications. Yep, on your right screen, you can see that first stage with the grid fins deployed. It's making its way Billions back of dollars. to attempt it's also to land a good on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. And we're just about a minute. Uh, I get a, a congrats from my mom. From like I had anything to do burn, with watching where today. Three of the nine Merlin engines do ignite to help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And then after the entry burn will be the landing burn, which is just a oh, single engine. Oh man, can I go burn? Moms are great. T plus 555 no, approaching 712 for first stage reentry burn. Still You're going to see in about a minute that right dragging. side fire up. Still left side is stage, the second stage that, Merlin engine, engine vacuum. Second stage on your left screen. Seco cutoff is 843, so pay attention to the right side first. Again, on your right screen is that first stage booster coming back towards our drone ship of course i still love you we're about you won't see that separate that second stage burn. separation on the left until a solid three minutes after the landing on of course i still Meanwhile, love you so right side still your focus for well, the first stage orbit. landing the vacuum yeah, merlin still I powering the second stage of crew dragon burn until eight minutes and 44 seconds into flight so a little over two minutes from now we'll hear the call out seco It'll then you be see that RCS firing, that RCS thruster good. firing, that's what that little, little puffs of smoke are on the right-hand side. That's the maneuvering of that stage, getting it ready for landing. You're going to see stage first stage start to fire its engine to arrest or slow down its velocity. Continuing to check in with Bob and Doug. Yes, that is what I'm going for, Diablo. Trajectory. And if I can ignite interest in this in somebody, that's why we're doing Just this, whether that be adults or kids. But it, Starting that entry All I did is put together right video screen, feeds and overlays and stuff and live. use my brain to talk about it. But seriously, thank you all for being here today. T plus 718, there is your first stage engine light and there to is slow her down. Burn beginning. You're welcome, Herc. Glad you're here. This burn lasts about 36 seconds long. Stage 2 FTS is safe. T plus 733 on our way to T plus 909 for first stage landing. You'll have a second first stage entry burn at 8.45. That's when they'll start the burn to land well, it. That entry burn continues. We're just about a minute away from Seco. We'll have a number of events all happen in rapid succession. Uh, it'll Probably be the down. second engine cut off. Stage one we'll is your first that, uh, stage one, stage one engine shut down. After. You will have one more burn in about 45 Actually, seconds. Just within a few seconds of each other. It's such I'm glad a you're cool enjoying it, Seven. I'm glad you're here. Screen seeing Bob and Doug on Dragon. Right now you can see the displays that they are seeing right Coming back right through the clouds on the right-hand side. I'm back to all step. Very butter, thank you very much. We are coming up 25 seconds or so away from Seco, or second engine cutoff. Seco is at 8.43. Bob and Doug are experiencing their highest G force. There's your atmospheric the interference on the right stage one the return. Back through Call the atmosphere. Shannon. There is Seco cut off. They're going to have to so cut right back over to the first stage real quick. Zones, if they were to abort at this point, would either be in abort to orbit or to land off the coast. 
Seiko should have cut off by now. Standing by for second. Stage one landing cut start. Off. Stage one landing start. And back shut down. Stage one landing lane. Confirmation of Seiko second. Here we go. There's of course off. I still love you for the first stage now booster recovery. Here we go. First stage to make its way to our drone ship. Of course I still love Dragon, you. Space, a little beyond the line. Insertion. 909 was the mark. It's a little Launch late. Confirmation is nominal orbital insertion. Nominal orbital insertion. And what you're seeing on your screen is a live view of our drone Where ship. Where is the rocket? Where our first stage will be coming down. Of course, I still love you. Loss of signal. That's not Looks great. Like we lost that live view, but why they keep saying, "Of course, I still love you." That is the name of the here. ship that the booster gets uh, captured on. It is landed. And there you can see it's there. It's on it. It's on the deck. Hopefully, they have a replay of it. The stream itself got cut off, but there she is on the deck of "Of course, I still love you." So very exciting for us. And in the circle. And as you can see on your right screen, Bob and Doug are still making their way. There's a fist bump in Crew Dragon orbit. on the landing <laughs> of stage <laughs> one. So exciting today. T plus <laughs> ten minutes. It does. Crew stop. Dragon separation from stage stop. two is in two All minutes. Right, we did. We did hear again that call out. Good orbital insertion. So that means Falcon Nine and Dragon right now exactly where they're supposed to be. No fun allowed. Indeed, no fun allowed. Look at what they got on board! They keep bringing plush stuffed like animals up to space! Indicator what are the, the Earth? No, Bob and Doug the Earth plushy last year? Now they've exactly got a dragon! That is they, that they, brought they, they brought a, a dinosaur <laughs> or something up there, and now Doug Hurley can't find it. He lost it. It's a sequined before dinosaur. Before Dragon initiates separation from the second stage, they do make sure to make no fun they, they allowed. They do ensure that the vehicle is not spinning and it is in good con condition before we separate. That's right. The T plus twelve oh two for second stage set from Crew Dragon. Gas thrusters built into the and the nose cone body sequence itself. will start at twelve forty eight, Matt. Exactly. So we do expect that separation to occur in about a minute from now, but. They do wait if until I go, they I'm have taking full confirmation that of course it is you are ready firm. to separate. T plus 1110 on our way to 1202 Such for cool step views. separation of stage two from Crew Dragon. That we are seeing right now. Bob and Doug on the right screen inside of Crew Dragon out in space. Yeah, already 200 kilometers over planet Earth or a little over 120 miles. Altitude, 200 kilometers. It looks to be controlled at that point at a controlled meters, speed of 27,000 27, kilometers per 16, hour. 16,000 miles per hour. There's your answer, Omega, for Goose. 16,000 miles per hour current speed. So again, we're just standing by. That separation event should be coming up shortly. Then they'll begin a series of checks on the Draco thrusters that are going to be used 1150 T plus on our way to 1202 for Dragon second stage separation from Crew Dragon. Space Station. Standing by Welcome for in Sparky. I know you were, uh, said hi earlier. It sounds like we had an expected LOS loss of signal with one of the ground stations. Waiting for confirmation. There now is stage two separation. separation confirmed. Dragon separation <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> there is a great view right in front of you Countdown of Dragon separating. separating. Confirmed. And there's that call out. Dragon is now officially making its way to the International Space Station today. <laughs> Dragon SpaceX, with that separation call, uh, we have a few words for you from our Falcon 19. Amazing. Standing by. Dragon, Chief Engineer on Dragon to Ground. <laughs> Bob Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and <laughs> wish you a great mission. That's SpaceX handing it over to NASA Mission Control, I believe. Thanks, Bala. Congratulations to you and the F9 team for the first uh, human ride for Falcon 9. And it was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work and uh, thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Copy all. Bala, good luck. Like proud of you guys and the rest of the team uh thank stage you two so much booster will burn up on reentry today putting america back into low earth orbit from the florida coast that is exactly the uh, idea Goddamn. it's Goddamn. just launching rocket to iss like that's no big deal but even this week we've gone through what what is so complicated about getting that rocket even from our, just All a right, weather so perspective in the air SpaceX, we confirm nominal equals activation and service section draco checkouts uh, nose cone deploys in progress there's your nose cone deploy. 
Capial, we're monitoring. The core here in Hawthorne giving the crew a heads up that we have confirmation the nose cone is deploying. So again, that nose cone is going to open up a little bit more than 90 degrees, goes up to about, I think, 105 degrees, and that's going to expose uh, the actual docking ring and the hatch that they're going to be going through once they attach to the International Space yep. Station. And also four of those Draco thrusters, we call them the forward bulkhead thrusters, they're going to be used for these major phase burns or firings of those thrusters to actually raise their orbit gradually over the coming hours. Also heard good activation of the ECLIS, that's the Environmental Control and Life Support System. That's everything controlling their atmosphere, uh, just keeping Dragon a nice, safe, habitable apparently, environment I think where they're going to be living from text for the next 19 hours until they arrive at the watch. space station. Right, exactly. And Falcon 9's job may be done for today, but the mission is not over. Crew Dragon's job is not done. As mm -hmm. you can see, Bob and Doug are still inside. So Crew we are Dragon looking at tomorrow. It will be a 19 hour trip to the International Space hours from Station now. before they dock so we will bring, tomorrow morning. Uh, they can start to unstrap and take their gloves off. They don't have to and sit in the cool seats views. per se. They can get these live they can get, they can get a little bit looser in the capsule now that they're now there. That they but they, the, 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 the nominal it's, operational, it's operational configuration of Crew Dragon is in the seat. There's obviously a restroom for the in ride. there. You can go to the bathroom. They're not going to have to hold it for and another day. And we're going to be with them, and we're going to be with all of you the entire way uh, for their journey to the space station. We're going to be covering live throughout Bob and Doug will obviously have a sleep period. Uh, where They're not going to break about coverage. Eight hours of sleep a little bit later today before they wake up for all of their final. How long approach. did they have to sit before uh, the launch? The about three and a half hours. Forward to in the next couple of hours is. Yeah, they're not breaking coverage. That's controls. crazy. We're going to stay they're on the air then. Going to be using this might be a displays to take control and 24 hour stream Dragon. of we'll me coming back to my computer every once in a while to see what's going on. We'll see what they're going to do with the coverage. We may still break because it'll just be a lot of drifting in space until tomorrow morning. I still think that's what we'll do. We'll reach a point today where we we bring the stream down. And they'll bring it back up tomorrow for the docking. Job, placing Bob and Doug in orbit. <laughs> we're going to stay I mean, with it a little is, while longer. Day, but we are. We're going to show this day. one. This is us kicking off that new We are era in a position now where we are in space. Talking about we have a capsule that is getting positioned. Don't kill yourself. Came to an um, we're getting into position for burns to yeah. raise weather, altitude and align the orbital yes. plane with ISS. Second time's a charm. <laughs> right. But yeah, second time and she went up. All right. So, so day for the history book. Let's go back over here. As you can see, here. we have lost some live signal there. But the mission still continues, and we're going to send it over to KSC. Um, Is that the sun behind the capsule? Uh, I believe so. Expected loss of signal in Newfoundland. Yeah, Jesse and Dan, we are just in no big awe deal. over yep. here. And I woke just up this morning and looked falling at the away forecast, from the like, Earth faster man, than the Earth can pull you back Sunday, down to it in we, space. We did it. That is what and orbit the is. The room cleared out. Everybody was outside watching, and the and inside the lights were shaking, the cameras were shaking. Lauren came back in with tears in her eyes. <laughs> uh, this is really amazing. I, I, I can't believe it. I saw it <laughs> with my own eyes. This is. I, I'm a little bit speechless. Mm -hmm. um, just so grateful that we got them up there and there's a lot more to go, a lot more to go, but I'm so happy they're safe right now. I'm just so happy. Yeah, Leland, you were talking <sighs> about it. It's amazing what we can do when we work together. Yes, American astronauts on an American rocket from American soil showing you what Americans can do when we come together as a team and blast Doug and, and Bob off to the cosmos. This is, this is what it's all about and their families and everyone is working together to uh, to take them up to space safely. So I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm, that rocket fuel <laughs> is still in my in my veins, and uh, I want to go get on the rocket. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's too late now. Maybe I the know. next one. I know. But Thank we want to go over to uh, Daryl at OSB2. The, he's there with the administrator, who um, hopefully has more. I'll words fix than we it because we're still kind of speechless, Daryl. Pretty incredible here, Marie, at the operations support building where. Hey, it's Clyde Kent. Applause. Oh, or Darrow, look at his launch. name. We weren't too far off. His name is Darrow, D-E-R-R-O-L, Nail. Includes President Donald Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, and uh, let me get the doc time for you. Jim Bridenstine, who joins me now, and you were with the President and the Vice President. Um, 
America's back launching human astronauts again. Tell me how you feel about that, and tell me about the president watching the launch. And Thank what you. Happened there. So this has been a long time coming. Um, it's been nine years since we've launched American astronauts. 19, it's approximately American 19 hours. I'm looking for the soil, exact time. And now it's done. <laughs> we have done it. It's been way too long. I want to give a lot of credit to Charlie Bolden. He was my predecessor as the NASA administrator. Uh, he fought hard for this program at a time when it didn't get any any support in Congress. Not posted yet. Uh, we now have an administration that is fully supportive of of our space flight initiatives, not just on the uh, exploration this, and discovery. With this certification the mission Mars, goes also, well, Dustin, the answer to that question is yes. Perspective, I bet you he up, is, man. Are strong, this is one of three babies just, uh, for Jim Bridenstine. Uh, uh, just an amazing day. You know, one of the things the president did right out of the gate when he became president is he created what's called the National Space Council. And he put the vice president as chairman of the National That's Space Council. That's not new, though. The National vice Space president Council, had been head of the National the Space Council Defense before. And the Secretary That's of State just Jim Bridenstine playing politics. The Secretary of he knows what he's doing. The Secretary of Education. We want um, money. We're going to play KD Go. The Joint Chiefs, all of these different um, amazing individuals that deal with space. Let me refresh the stream to get rid of the bar here. Parts of the federal government deal with space. And the vice president invited those members of the Congress, bipartisan members of Congress. Bring the volume down to an acceptable level and take her back full screen. There we go. And there's the bar gone. Um, you know, Excellent. For, for a long time now. So um, I'll just tell you, I, I, I'm breathing a sigh of relief. But I will also tell you, I am not going to celebrate until Bob and Doug are home safely. Um, tomorrow they're going to dock to the International Space Station. Yep. Tonight I'm heading to. He's a, he. The director of NASA is a politician seven, more than a happens, scientist, so, and he is uh, very good at what is, he does. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a relief. The, the nose cone is now open. Um, it's now deployed, uh, which means that um, you know now we're going to go into some some burns. We're going to have some phasing burns. We're going to have some. Um, some you know boosting burns, and we're going to get uh, as much as we can in alignment with the International Space Station um, as early as possible here. But also, um, I know it's hard, but you know the big thing that we need to do now is <laughs> we got to get Bob and Doug, who have now gone through this exercise, sick twice, burn, need to get some rest. Um, but I, I can guarantee you there will be no rest for a good a good amount of time while they're up there in orbit. And they are certainly on their way, and a lot of people joining us for this entire celebration and watching it. We just heard uh, 10 million people watching live as this. 10 million happened. people. And President Donald That's becoming the huge third sitting for a launch watch. To watch a launch live from the Kennedy Space Center. You're welcome, Matt. I'm happy you were here. All right, Dustin. We're, we're going to hang out here a little while longer until we understand when the the uh, docking time frame is. We'll get the, the timer below me updated for that, and we'll get the status meter back up when we know. That's a big risk. You know, he also said we're going to go to the moon by 2020. Uh, is there some adrenaline involved there? I would imagine. I mean, he's really happy with himself, and that's because he's led NASA to this moment through the inheritance of commercial crew from effectively the Obama era program to what it is now. That's huge evolution. And we're we're so grateful for it. Um, I don't think so, Blade. Welcome in. But I don't think that counts things like us. I think they're counting raw numbers on like YouTube, NASA TV. So that doesn't count the how many of there of you are there right now? Thirty-three of you watching here with us today, and I appreciate that. And of course, I was like, I hopefully brought a very distinct experience to this historic day in space flight. Of course, we've had we've worked overtime to. Glad you were here in Deco. Glad you enjoyed it. A little behind schedule, but we got it done, and we got it done. You pulled the Twitter feed up just because. Wood, um, but um, but so far so good. It's looking good. You personally, Jim, as that rocket was still don't have a time for moment. the yeah. docking. Uh, still waiting to see experience? it. Well, I was praying. I'm not going to lie to you. I was praying. I was praying for Bob and Doug. I was praying for their families. I was praying for their safe return, even though they're just going. Um, but man, I'll tell you, it was. Uh, I've heard that rumble before, but it's a whole different feeling when you've got approximately 19 hours is about as close as you're going to get. And, so and liftoff was team, at America's team. This is launch what? America. This is everything that America 320. Has to offer so let's say three o'clock. 19 hours later is right there, minus five. No doubt. So um, three. That's 15 minus five. 10 a.m. So let's put 10 a.m. up as the countdown timer for time docking. We'll adjust that as we get the time better. To reflect on humanity and what we can do when we work together, when we when we strive and when we achieve. And if this can inspire a young child to become the next Elon Musk or the next Jeff Bezos or the next Sir Richard Branson, uh, then that's what this is all about. 
So there's your countdown timer, roughly, <laughs> until the they category. start entertaining docking. 18 well, we hours, 13 minutes, and some change. We'll, count, we'll leave that counter and running. We'll stick with NASA Thank TV coverage the of the right, mission for a little while longer. This is a lot of glad handing and, and handshaking, Doug and, Bob and that's fine. They deserve it. But um, we, will, um, com we will definitely be back in the morning for NASA TV coverage of Crew Dragon docking to International Space Station. So I'll be back. I'm going to kind of stay step out of the flight suit because so this thing is not exactly cool and I've been in it for about four and a half hours and uh, this is your chance the next phases of the get up walk around get a drink pay attention what's going on here with NASA TV and I'll be back in just a few minutes station for Bob and Doug tomorrow that's right and as you follow along we invite you to tune into a post-launch news conference that's how I'm glad first fam thanks for hanging out with us we appreciate it TV We'll have Hopefully you had an enjoyable Lisa time watching here it. Here to take questions live on this unprecedented achievement in I'll be back space in flight. And in addition to NASA TV, you can follow along always on Twitter at, at NASA and NASA.gov for mission updates as it progresses. Here now are highlights from the mission so far, May 30th, 2020. Remember this day. You'll, you'll have this memory forever. The day America returned astronauts to orbit from U.S. soil. Wow, we're making history again. Let's go.
All right. Well, we do want to thank Marie, the entire KSC team for that great launch. Marie, Lauren, Leland, it was great being with you guys the whole time. Uh, but as we just said, the mission has only now just begun. Right now, Bob and Doug are flying free inside of Dragon after that successful separation from Falcon 9. We've got just under 19 hours until they arrive at the space station. We're going to be here with you the entire trip. Immediately after Dragon separated from Falcon 9, it began what we call activation and rendezvous phase of the mission. During this phase, Dragon is configured for on-orbit operations. The phase begins after separation of Dragon from Falcon 9 and ends with the completion of the final co-elliptic burn. Our initial orbit today is 190 kilometers by 205 kilometers, with those values representing the perigee and apogee of the orbit, or the lowest and highest points over the Earth. That means the orbit isn't a perfect circle, but more like a slight el ellipse. Over the next 19 hours, Dragon's going to execute a series of burns which will gradually raise its orbit to align more closely with the station. There are going to be five major burns or firing of those Draco thrusters on Dragon that are going to bring it close to station before we begin our final approach maneuvers. The first one is coming up in just a little bit, and it's the phase burn. Right now, teams are doing their go-no-go -no -go to get ready for that, and it's performed at the first apogee, or the highest point, of the initial orbit, and that's going to raise Dragon's pair to a higher altitude. And after a calculated time, which is based on what our orbital data shows us, the boost burn raises Dragon's orbit until it's just 10 kilometers lower than the space station, followed soon after by the close co-elliptic burn to place Dragon on orbit roughly co-elliptic with the space station. This means Bob and Doug will be about 10 kilometers lower than the station during their entire orbit around the Earth. The fourth maneuver is the transfer burn, where, we'll, where we raise Dragon's apogee, or highest point of its orbit, to just two and a half kilometers below the station. And we round everything out with a final co-elliptic burn to once again maintain a constant orbit beneath station. It's just two and a half kilometers below. Then we get into the approach initiation and final stages of Dragon's rendezvous with the space station. This is also where we start what we call joint operations between the Dragon control team here in Hawthorne and the space station flight controllers in Mission Control Houston. The teams transition to those integrated ops roughly 45 minutes prior to approach in initiation, which is another burn that really means Dragon's getting close. During the approach, SpaceX flight controllers work in tandem with the NASA team in Houston to activate and test out a number of systems on Dragon, including establishing bi-directional communications with the station using a system known as C2V2, which stands for Common Communications for Visiting Vehicles. They also set up a data stream from Dragon to the station, just giving another path for Dragon telemetry or data about its performance to come down to the ground and giving an additional command capability to astronauts on board the station. They'll also maneuver Dragon to the proper attitude and then initialize the navigation sensors used for that very slow and methodical approach to station. At approximately 5.24 a.m. Pacific time, that's tomorrow morning, Draco thrusters on Dragon will fire for the approach initiation burn when Dragon is about two and a half kilometers below station and just about seven kilometers behind it. This will swing Dragon up until it is about 400 meters directly below the station, and this maneuver will also move Dragon inside one of those two safety zones around the station that requires a set of go-no-go -no -go pulls with the different control teams. The first zone is called the approach ellipsoid, which is an imaginary shape measuring about four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers, which is essentially a large three-dimensional oval. Two kilometers, which is essentially a large three-dimensional oval. Before Dragon is given permission to move inside the ellipsoid, referred to by the teams as the AE, it is configured to be on what is known as a 24-hour safe trajectory. This means that if Dragon lost all control... Dragon, SpaceX for update and burn regime. If Dragon lost all control to its thrusters, it would be at least 24 hours before its... Go ahead, Jake. ...trajectory would move inside the approach ellipsoid. Okay. Uh, for suit docking, we're still waiting for cabin to be below 25C and trending down. Uh, it looks like it's on the way there, but not quite. Um, and the second item is during the burn, we may have uh, intermittent calm and due to pointing, and this is expected.
We're just listening. Okay. Copy the uh, cabin temp and suit doffing and the intermittent calm during the burn. Good read back. And we are go for the phase burn. That uh, looks like it's in about 12 minutes. Dragon, go for the phase burn. We're just getting a couple of quick updates. They're still wearing those suits that they've been in since we saw them suit up in the ONC building several hours ago. Once temperature just comes down inside the cabin a little bit, they'll get to go to doff or just take their suits off. And you just heard we're less than 12 minutes now from that first burn called the phase burn. Getting back to where we're going to be tomorrow, though, once Dragon arrives at just 400 meters below the station, it's going to be what's known as at what's known as waypoint zero. And that's the first checkpoint during our approach. The vehicle can hold at 400 meters or it can continue on if all the systems check out and then it'll begin the approach to waypoint one. By this point, the teams will do a go, no go for Dragon to move inside the keep out sphere. It's another one of those zones around the station and it's an imaginary sphere with a radius of about 200 meters. It's just another chance to confirm all the guidance, navigation, and control systems are working correctly on Dragon before we move it in really close to station. And it carries a similar requirement to the AE that Jesse talked about, where if Dragon lost all control of its thrusters, it wouldn't have to, it would not go inside of that sphere for at least four orbits or about six hours instead of the 24 hours for the approach ellipsoid. Dragon's move from waypoint zero to waypoint one will swing it up and out in front of the station, pausing at a distance of approximately 220 meters. At this point, it will be on what we call the docking axis, which essentially means it is directly in front I'm of the I'm gonna take us port. off of the YouTube Bobby feed and on the built-in feed here. Bobby most port of the International Space second. Station, the node two forward port. That is where Dragon docked last for new commercial spacecraft flights and any other future spacecraft that also use the international docking standard. Before moving into the final waypoint, the crew will execute their second manual flight test, except this time they'll be in what we call the near field. That just means they're close to the station. The crew will actually command a hold when they're 220 meters away Last from the station on the and conduct a series of maneuvers. So it'll be Doug and Bob at the controls. Uh, first, they'll fly Dragon to the center line of the docking approach, just precisely lining it up with that docking port. Then they'll do a number of translational maneuvers, so using the Draco thrusters on Dragon to move it around the different axes. And then they'll always be checking in with the ground on how much propellant is used. Again, translational is just you're moving back, forward, side to side. When we refer to attitude maneuvers, it's where you're pointing. But once they're complete with that, they'll transition control back over to the Dragon flight computer to resume that automated docking. And once Dragon is only 20 meters away from waypoint two, that the spacecraft focuses on aligning its docking system with the docking adapter. Dragon will then fly in and make contact with the IDA, giving us what we call a soft capture. The soft capture ring then retracts until sensors indicate it's time for hooks to drive in place to give, to give us a hard capture and firmly secure Dragon to the station. Then it's time for leak checks and hatch opening, which is currently timeline to come about two hours following docking. We're going to be here with you the entire way. And again, it's going to be a two team effort once Dragon gets really close. So why don't we jump over to Gary International Space Houston. It's got to be exciting seeing that launch and knowing that they're on the way to you. How's the team doing, Gary? Dan, there is a lot from the room. Uh, we are closely monitoring Dragon's uh, f a few burns that are coming up here. You both did a, gr did a gr great job of uh, describing some, emo for some of those. From the International Space Station side of things, we're really in a monitor mode uh, for much of the flight. Uh, once it gets closer to some of the docking portion of the flight that you were going through, um, that's when we'll start uh, really uh, kicking into gear for joint operations. Uh, just when the Dragon is uh, just about 80 kilometers away, we'll start doing our checkouts of a system called C2V2. Uh, that's the communication system. Dragon, through the most of its flight, will be talking or communicating with the TDRS satellites, the geosynchronous sta satellites uh, around the Earth. Uh, right about the 80 kilometer par part, it'll be, um, we'll be turning on the C2V2. Uh, that is the common communication for visiting vehicles and establishes a link between the International Space Station and Dragon. It'll be turned on for some uh, S-band connections and testing some of the radio signals as uh, Dragon makes its approach. 
Uh, really, though, we'll be monitoring the uh, approach through some of those final burns. Once it's in front of the International Space Station, the space station has a few things uh, that it needs to do from the attitude control side of things to really prepare uh, the station for docking, uh, switching some of the thrusters over to the Russian side and really relying on those control moment gyros and the angular momentum there to keep the uh, International Space Station nice and steady. Once it makes its approach, uh, it'll really be up to uh, Bob and Doug uh, to uh, perform those final maneuvers and, and into docking. Chris Cassidy, though, will be monitoring from the inside. He's got a tool called the RPOP, and he'll be uh, monitoring the approach from the inside of the International Space Station. Chris Cassidy, through the uh, past couple days, has been preparing uh, the International Space Station for Bob and Doug, getting some of their, uh, their the beds that they'll be sleeping in on the International Space Station ready, uh, really preparing some of the tools that he'll use for the monitoring, and then when uh, Doug and Bob are nice and close to the International Space Station, opening up the hatch and uh, getting some air uh, right between the hatch where Bob and Doug will enter the International Space Station. Everything's still looking good from the space station side of things. We should be exiting a loss of communication now and going back and uh, getting some views from station. Still having great views from Bob and Doug incrementally. We'll be following right along through the duration of this flight until it docks just 19 hours from now. That's it from us in here in Mission Control Houston. Dan, I'll send it back to you over in Hawthorne. All right, thank you, Gary. Now joining me here in Hawthorne, though, we'll get her a second to get mic'd up and everything, but SpaceX's Kate Tice, uh, who was with us for Demo 1, we got to do the splashdown together. Yeah. Now we're going to do kind of that initial flight on orbit with Bob and Doug. So, Kate, thanks for jumping in. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate Tice. I'm a senior engineer here at SpaceX. Really excited to be joining you for the Demo 2 webcast here with Dan, uh, like you said, in front of uh, Mission Headquarters here in Hawthorne. So, like he was saying before, Dragon is going to be performing um, a couple of different things going on in the next few hours. We're going to have uh, five major burns um, but at the moment we are coming up to the first burn which is the phase burn and that's going to be again the first firing of those thrusters those draco thrusters it'll be using both the forward bulkhead so the ones that were uncovered by that nose cone and also the ones around the service section or around kind of the bottom portion and we've been looking at our timeline and it's expected to last about 492 seconds is what they have it in there. So it's gonna be a fairly long firing. And again, these are done just to gradually raise up the orbit. So essentially what we're doing is we're waiting until we're at the highest point of our orbit over the earth. We're firing the thrusters and that raises up the lowest point of our orbit. And then we just circle everything out with what we call a co-elliptic burn once we get back to that other side of the orbit. So they're gonna just gradually do that over the coming hours until they're at the International Space Station. And then it's time for docking. Yeah, so um, like Dan said, uh, in it, so they, we have a total of 12, boost, uh, excuse me, a total of 12 Draco thrusters on board of Dragon. Um, the, in addition to the four bulkhead Draco thrusters, which we'll be using um, upcoming, there are 12 more Dracos in the service section, which is the area along the lower part of the Dragon capsule. Uh, these will be used in every burn and are primarily there to help maintain Dragon's attitude, which is especially important when doing the finely tuned approach into docking. Now, they can be also be used for smaller translational maneuvers, but um, right now we're approaching the phase burn and um, that should be about three minutes. Yep, so we're just gonna continue to stand by, wait for that phase burn. That'll be the first major on-orbit event since they've done all of their checkouts and the nose cone is open. And then we'll be standing by. We should be having the first manual flight test coming up in just about 50 minutes from now if everything goes well. So that'll be our first chance to watch Bob and Doug actually fly yeah. Dragon. Nope, so, didn't mean to have the mic live, but it's a good thing I didn't like yell at anybody next door or anything. Thanks, but it's... The, the crew has the ability to step in should they need it, and this they'll actually be stepping in and taking control. Um, we will so stick around for a manual flight test. That's going to be pretty cool. Time. Yeah, something uh, that I like to remind so the stream my will stay up. family, you know, we will continue to bring to his size happy about that. If you guys want this uh, to stay up, I don't have any any mission. issue with so that whatsoever. Like that, what we are going to do here, though, is we're at a good point to stop the recording, later. which is of the um, launch. You know, uh, we're not going to put up a seven-hour video, so <laughs> kind of uh, we're about T plus um, if I uh, 45 minutes from launch. We're going to go ahead and kill the recording here. Thank you to those of you who have watched this on YouTube. But the live broadcast will continue. So. 
it's we're going to keep going through the uh, at least the manual the flight control test. That sounds very interesting. Flight, like Bob and Doug um, are no doing problem, Cy. Si. And we'll be continuing to do for the next <laughs> 19 hours. So that opportunity for them to... Thanks, man. That opportunity for them to... But uh, uh, recording one here. The, the live broadcast will continue. We'll stick around as long as you guys really want to want to hang out and pay attention. I will go back to mostly text typing until there's something to interject with voice. Environments are stable. Our plan is to give you the go for suit offing after.